Saints, what has happened to the body of Christ today in this world, okay, these perilous times, this planet, we are supposed to be the saints of God, his representatives here on earth as the disciples and apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers of old time were, okay, oh, Father, Lord. Father, Lord, give me the words to say here. Let me speak boldly in Christ, Lord, that I, that I put you up. It is about Christ, people, Jesus of Nazareth. God himself was born of a virgin 2,000 years ago to live as an example of how we ought to live. It is about the king it's about his kingdom. It's about the king. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. We all need to humble ourselves in his sight. We all need to humble ourselves. We are all unprofitable servants. Okay. It says that in Luke. When you come to repentance, when you all things are made new, when you realize that Christ Jesus is God, and you're born again, and you start repenting the things of the flesh. You stop watching TV. You, you, you're a new person because that stuff offends you now because you are living in his righteousness and the Holy Spirit will reveal to you all truths of the scriptures, okay? All truths in what God wants you to do with your life, okay? When you're coming to repentance, and you stop drinking the alcohol and you're just like, wow, boom, I'm, I'm so different. I'm so new. Okay. Your, your interests and your likes become different. That's Christ within you. He gets all the credit. He gets all that glory. And no one should boast. Okay. We, oh, Father, it is about Christ Jesus. It's about Yah, Yahweh Yeshua. Okay, we need to put him back on the throne. What has happened to the body of Christ today? How come when we're going out and witnessing that our words fall flat and there's no, it's vain speaking, it's vain talking. Because sometimes, because we are flawed, okay? We are flawed because we're living in a fleshly body, but we have the Holy Spirit within us, so all things are made new. And we try to do things pleasing unto the Father, and we do. Okay, because that's the power of the cross and the power of the resurrection. That we become God's holy people. Be holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord God. That is his a characteristic of God, is that his holiness, wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, Humbleness and piety and the fear of the Lord. These are the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. Oh, Lord Jesus. So, Christ is our King. The Word of God. That is our instruction manual. Okay. The Holy Bible. I call it the Word of God. Oh, Father. It is the written Word. Okay. This is how we know what our Christ was like because we read the Bible. Okay, Christ's words are in red in there. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This is what tells us the characteristics of our God, our history. Okay, what God are you following if it not the God of the Bible? You can't put a, a God of your own imagination. Okay, we get his character, what he's like. His likes and dislikes are from the Bible. Okay, and the Holy Spirit will reveal his personality to you as well. And if he, it has to coincide with scripture, okay, the Holy Spirit wouldn't tell me that God said something that doesn't, if it doesn't coincide with the Bible, it's not truth. This is what John said, try the spirits, whether they be not from God. How do we try them? By our own heart? No, we can't trust our own hearts, okay? We can't trust, we can't lean on our own understanding. We have to do it from the word of God. Amen. One time, God gave me a message for somebody. I'm not going to name who it was. I said, you have too many earthly possessions. You need to sell this stuff. 
This is worldly stuff that you are clinging to. It is not of the kingdom of God. Amen. And I did say God told me to tell you this because it coincides with scripture. You got to have a scripture that backs up what you're saying. And yes, it does say whoever says preaching that gain is godliness is wrong. He wants us to sell all this crap. None of it matters. Okay, Father. None of it. It doesn't matter. It's junk. It's garbage. Okay. Oh, Lord. We have to lift up Christ. It's about Christ. Okay. There's where do you draw the line when you're telling a testimony and when you're boasting? It ain't about you. It's about Christ Jesus, the King. It's about the King. And yeah, good. He changed you. Yes, of course. Of course, as it is written, as it is written. Okay, but when I am witnessing to someone, okay, when I am evangelizing and I'm telling them the testimony, okay, I don't take drawing on 20, 40 minutes of the old man. I don't go into specifics, okay? Ooh, Lord, Father, give me the boldness because this is a hard saying. My foot, I don't want to say it, but I've got to. I got to because it's truth, amen. So first of all, I want to say, why are you witnessing in the first place? Okay, is it so you could get rewards from God? Is it so you could get more fruits? Or is it because of the love of the lost? When I witness, it's because I want them to have what I have. I have a personal relationship with God. I want that person who has no hope to have hope. To let them know what happens after you die. To let them gain that knowledge. It's not a mystery. The Bible tells us about hell. Tells us about being in the presence of the Lord. And Christ is our mediator between ourselves and God. He makes us righteous in the sight of the Lord. His blood, his resurrection, his spirit of truth makes us righteous in the sight of the holy creator God who made all things through Christ the way. Okay, I want that lost person who's depressed, who has anxiety, who's listening to evil seducing spirits, who's in drunkenness because they have no hope. I want them. I love them. I know they're on their way to hell. I know the the truth of hell because I believe the Bible. I believe the written word of God that it is fire. It is torment. It is perishing in the sight of the Lord. Okay. I don't want that lost person to go there. I want them to have a relationship with the father. That is why I witnessed to the lost because Christ Jesus has put a love in my heart for all people. My brethren, my brothers and sisters especially, but also for my enemies and for my neighbors. I don't know. I love them. I love them, okay? And love does not mean tolerance. No, it does not. No, it does not. Love is the cross. It's the resurrection, okay? Sometimes you have to love your neighbor enough to stand up for truth and say, nope, that is wrong. This is what scripture says. Scripture is all truth. It is the written word. It is the living word. It is the word that Christ wrote in our hearts. Okay, the moral law, all command, it's all in our hearts. Oh, so sometimes you do have to love that person enough to tell them that they're doing wrong. That, that, that lost person that doesn't know Christ or the Bible or anything, that they're lost in. And they say, oh, well, doesn't God love... Uh, a good God wouldn't make a place like hell. You'd say, no, no, my, my, my neighbor, no, my friend. Hell is real because God is such a holy and a righteous God. He has a sense of justice and truth. His anger is a righteous anger. His jealousy is justified. He should be jealous. I'm jealous on his behalf because other people are worshiping false gods, Hinduism, Buddhism. There's also false forms of God in their heads. That's idolatry. I'm jealous on his behalf. He's creator. He deserves worship. He deserves our prayers. He deserves our thanks. He deserves it. Because he made us.
Okay, he made all things by the power of his word. I'm running out of time here. Let us not, if you're saying I, 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 okay, going into specifics. Oh, I, I left my husband, you know, it was $10,000 and this cost $5,000. And you're going into detail of the old man? That is vain speaking. That's not going to help the other person at all. You tell them the glory of truth. Why did you leave those things? Because of Christ. And you realized, hey, this ain't worth nothing. None of this uh, material possessions mean nothing. <sighs> Lord Jesus.